This time tomorrow night, we should be in the process of finding out who the next president of the GAA will be. There are three candidates up for the big job to replace Larry McCarthy. They are Jarlath Burns, uh, Niall Erskine and also Pat Tien from Offaly. Uh, looking forward to the Clore in general and that big vote tomorrow night. I'm delighted to say we're joined on the line by Declan Bogue. Declan, very welcome back to the show. Uh, good evening. Good evening. It's um, <clears throat> obviously the big job. Uh, that's up for grabs tomorrow night and Jarlath Burns I guess is probably the man who's taken all the headlines because he's been here before and he was narrowly pipped of course the last election by by Larry McCarthy and the expectation is that you know such as the second time candidature that he will get in Uh, don't know if it's necessarily guaranteed when you look at the lay of the land and where the other candidates are coming from Nothing's guaranteed, of course. Um, And when you when you say where they're coming from uh, you know that 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 can mean many things. It can mean more they're politically aligned, like as such. With a, I mean that with a, with a small p. Uh, just who they've been working with in the GA, where their loyalties lie, uh, and you know the the logic should follow that. For example, someone like uh, Noel Erskine, she, she, he should get the overseas vote, having put so many years in overseas and having so much experience. Uh, so so much experience Nell has had like in, in all the different places he's worked in in Europe and, and uh, Britain and so on but that's not guaranteed even at that then where does his transfers go to does it go to to Pat Tehan does it go to Jarlath uh, with his Don- presumably he'll be getting mm-hmm. some of Donegal's votes if not uh, and um, if not all and like where do the transfers go there so look nothing's guaranteed um, but uh much as the the first rule of politics is learn how to count, uh, having spoken to the people that keep a serious eye on these things, they they would be pretty confident that Jarth has done his counting right this time. Yeah, listening to him, he was on OTBAM this morning, and he even it was almost like a throwaway line whereby he was talking about trying to garner his support and and rally the votes and all that kind of stuff and his initial conversations this time round around Ulster were of the nature of listen, the Ulster County's telling them, don't worry about us you have our vote, go and sort out your numbers elsewhere. And I think that's where it's going to be won and lost. But I think when you mentioned Nod Erskine, like what can't be overlooked is that world GAA um, I guess net because it takes in so many different territories now and most importantly takes in so many votes. I think it's in around the region. 73 votes uh, of the total were made up of that world conglomerate last time. Uh, this time around it's in around the same. And that's again a significant number to try and corral into a consensus. Yes, and I mean, you know, it, it, it's it, it, it becomes most apparent when uh, Larry McCarthy, who is the first overseas, if you want to call him that, um, president happens because he spent uh, uh, his working life in, in New York and so on. So obviously he was going to get the overseas vote and so on. And then probably some kind of transfers would have went his way too. I don't think it's going to be as big a... I don't think it's going to be as big a concern this time. But yes, uh, Nell Erskine can be seen as an overseas candidate, but not really. It's not as explicit as it was last time for Larry. Definitely, it is. It's a, it's a hard thing um, to predict where they might go. But I mean, they tend to go where the you know the closest that they can get to the power. Because uh, any time that there's a, a, a vote on any contentious issue in Congress, they tend to go with the conservative point of view. Uh, because then they don't want to rock any votes um, with the, the establishment in Croke Park as such. And they can't because that is what they, they rely on for funding and so on. Same as everybody else. But like, you know, county boards are probably a bit more renegade in that respect. But in general, overseas units just go with the whatever status quo or the most conservative line is. Um, there's no there's no certainty where there's going to where they're going to go. But, you know, it, it, they may not need Jarrett may not need. But he also made a compelling case to some delegates from overseas, as, as one of them told me about, you know, um, what's the feeling out there as regards Jarlath's run this time around? Because I know you wrote about him back in 2020 when he was up against um, Larry McCarthy and a couple other candidates as well. This time the field is narrower and he has that experience of having to try and press the flesh and, and go to these different counties and go to the different boards and try and get support on board. Um, has his view on the position 
uh, changed in any way in those intervening three years? It's a really interesting thing that you say there. Um, and you know what? Uh, I would imagine that Jarlath Burns is... <laughs> it, it, it would have stung, absolutely. It would have stung three years ago when he didn't get the vote and he would have felt that he he had achieved an awful lot and, and, and put a, a serious amount of his life into the GA and then not to become the GA president. But I'll tell you what, he, he dodged some bullet at that point because, you know, Larry McCarthy, he, he won it. And in possibly in the past, it mightn't be entirely fair, but his job was remarkably complicated because he went straight into the job and then the pandemic arrived and, uh, you know, it wasn't even a matter of getting your feet under the table or treading water. You're into instantly capsize, capsizing a uh, situation. Um, there was uncertainty over when any games might be played again in the, in the entire calendar year. I made a, a decision then to go with club first. All these radical things that just were landing on his desk from day one. So if he had a vision... If he had sort of, well, I wanted to have this and that and I want to achieve this by the time I'm finished as president. Really, he hadn't a hope from day one as soon as COVID arrived because it was all about bailing water. It was all about getting the 2020 championship played behind closed doors, the most eerie thing that you'd ever see in all Ireland final in Empty Crook Park and so on. And we had it uh, two weekends in a row. But you know what? Uh, he could. He was on a hiding to nothing, really, like for, for the most part of that um, so uh, while Jarlath may have been stung at that time I would say he has learned an awful lot more in the intervening years he has probably got uh, as he said you know when he was going back to these county boards now it was with a sense of familiarity because a lot of them you know uh, there was a time where he was kind of frozen out of the Croke Park scene after having uh, fulfilled so many duties like you know the uh, one of the first players rep on the, on on that you know player council, uh, he headed up the one two five anniversary celebrations, and he was in some ways a right hand man of sorts for Park Duffy when he was the director general, and they went from that really and a different sort of a, a feeling came over Crow Park or, uh, after that, and um, he was sort of frozen out, so. An awful lot of the people that he was going to may not have been entirely familiar with him. Uh, he wouldn't have the same breadth and sort of certainly maybe not, not have done as much as a Pat Tehan on Croke Park committees. But, uh, you know, he, he doesn't take anything for granted this time, I'd say. And uh, when he's going back to people, he's able to say how much further on he is with his own understanding and where he thinks he can take things. Because... The GA has changed even incredible uh, amount, even in the three years. Like you know, team expenditure and all that was always high. Now it's reaching uh, tremendous levels altogether. Like you know, the issue of pay for play. You know, he's he's willing to go there, um, and also since Brexit has festered and developed and so on. Like you know, it puts him in a position where he is acutely aware of the political changes that are going to affect Ireland, Northern Ireland, Britain, whatever you want to call the relationship we have with with them uh, over the next number of years. Because it's going to be seismic. One way or another, uh, if the status quo is retained and, like, you know, Brexit becomes a, a fact of life and an irreversible thing, at least Jarlath Burns has got a good hand on living on the border. Uh, and the GAA... As he has said, like it needs a seat on government planning, like strategic reviews and all that. It can't be just that uh, Irish government go away off and do something without the biggest community driving association or organisation in the country, by far, without having some kind of influence. And at least he appreciates that. Whereas I don't know if the other candidates would exactly relish that. There's a bigness about a lot of the responsibilities <clears throat> involved in GA the GA presidency that makes me wonder is that three year span long enough to get the stuff that Charlotte Burns wants to do done or the, the things that we perceive that he even might want to get done done within that time frame because 
working in lockstep with governments, developing developing those relationships, uh, and I mean like on both sides of the border to get people involved with the executive as well to see what might go on with the like the the, the development of C- Casement Park is obviously going to be a huge thing over the next three years as well, and whether that happens or not, um, is a three year term for what he wants to do long enough, and is is, is it ill fitting for him to be looking for the role of GA president when there might be other roles necessarily within the GEA that could suit his his outlook better. Yes, but well, director general is a role that came up, and and, and uh, you know, Jareth wasn't interested in that. Liam Sheedy was interested, and other people were interested, and, and, and Tom Ryan got it, and fair play to him. Um, and a three year term, it's something. You know what? You, you're the first person I, I've heard questioning that the the length of tenure. Perhaps five years is, is a far more suitable uh, time frame. But, like, you know, when you talk about three years, three years is a damn long time. Like, if you have a, a wish list, and really, like, the you have to remember that the president, in some respects, is quite a limited, narrow focus. And, you know, there's a strategic review already in place that, that runs to 2026. And, you know, can he alter a huge amount or can he staple on three or four things onto that to say, I want to have that done by this year. Like, you can't really, like, that's unworkable. But there are certain things that you look at in the GA and they just drag and drag and drag because I'm not particularly sure the people have the, uh, want to get their teeth really into it. Like, the, the, the whole issue of integration. And I know that so many administrators have said, if you're starting the GA today, well, then you wouldn't have a ladies' association. You wouldn't have camogie. So you'd all be under the one umbrella. And like, how long has this been talked about, and floated, and mooted, and a uh, committee set up, and you know Mary Magalise named as the new person, that, and now, like in the last week, they've sent out. I think we'll all have a big survey about this to see if it's if it's workable or what people think about integration. I mean, my God, like, Jesus Christ, how long is this thing going to go until there actually are hard decisions made? I honestly believe that uh, there's a serious amount of a can being kicked down the road here because the moment that you do fully integrate and then you have your GPA that is both male and female, well then, look, you know, you see those grants, you see all the uh, the monthly expenses the players are entitled to, that will have to be split in two. And I'll just, it'll be interesting to see how people react to that when that happens. And when you're also being told that uh, a facility is every bit uh, available to ladies as it is the men's, uh, up until now it's been fine. And there has been, no, it hasn't been fine, sorry, before anyone jumps down <laughs> the throat about that, but it hasn't been fine. But, you know, there was an acceptance among the men uh, that they would take precedence and women have had to fight against that. But the moment that, that becomes official then, and it is 50-50, uh, there will be war in clubs and in county boards and stuff like that. And it is my firm belief that uh, the people who have been overseeing this so far are a little bit frightened of the, the buyer's remorse if it comes to pass. It's a case of once that lever has been, you know, drawn down. I guess there's no putting it back up. And there's a, like there's even little things like you touched on there with the facilities, uh, as Jarlett framed them this morning, the assets surrounding a club. Like most clubs, he, well, he says, like obviously as you mentioned there, if you're setting up the GEA now, it would be inc- inconceivable that women wouldn't be involved. Um, mm. Similarly, he says he doesn't know many. Well, you know, doesn't know many clubs that aren't fully integrated already. But then he mentioned the assets, and then he mentioned, you know, that, that as soon as that capital A came out, I was like, oh, that's that's going to be a sticking point because that's that their lifelong kind of habits and traditions, and well, this has always been the way, and that's kind of the thing that's always stood in the GA's way, in a, in a lot of things is that because something has always been the way, to try and change that culture is a very very difficult thing to to bring about for the entire entirety of the association. Absolutely, like you know, I mean, it is just one of these things. It it, it sounds great, and people will always uh, say. And people, when I say it sounds great, it is just the way it should be. But it just happens to be that the moment that you do actually say, right, okay, this is all impl- implemented on January the first, twenty twenty four. We are equal. That's it. And then you turn around and uh, county players that say, well, I got 
what, 157 euro a week last year for my my expenses, and now it's cut to to 73 euro. What's what's that about? Oh well, you know that goes to the left half forward on the Armagh ladies team now. I, uh, you know, there will be there will be uproar because players I've seen this week <laughs> they get very touchy about their expenses and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, that's just one example. Like you know, the, another example was like the 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 whole notion of Casement Park uh, has been talked about for years, mm. for years. Like this is long before any COVID uh, or, or or the further sort of political uh, rows and 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 you know maneuverings that has happened around Casement Park. On Larry McCarthy's appointment, he gave a Zoom interview, I was on it, and I asked him the question about Casement Park, and he said that it was no further up the list of priorities for the GA than the grounds at Drogheda or Navan or, and he named out t- two or three others. So, I mean, like, and his tenure has come, and it has gone, and there hasn't been a thing really done about Casement Park. So, I mean, you know... There, there are difficult things and presidents look at and some of them just say, Do you know what, I'm not I'm not going to get involved in that at all. That's not for me. Uh, because it's sometimes it's lose-lose. Well, the candid role of GA president, because the, the one, the, the, there was one visual that stood out from the annual reports presentation at Crow Park uh, a couple of weeks ago now. And it was when the whole issue of, of uh, Crokes and, and Glenn came up and it almost seemed as if Larry didn't want to, to get into addressing the situation and it was up to Tom Ryan to really offer the meat and potatoes of, of the actual decision-making that went on behind the scenes. And that kind of seemed to be, in microcosm, I guess, the relationship between President and DG is that, they you know, the, the DG actually gets their hands dirty and has to deal with all this kind of stuff, whereas the President is more of a, you know ambassadorial kind of role and can you redefine that in the short space of time that you have to operate as president I guess Yes and, and but I will pick up one thing that you say it's, just, it's the DG's job to get his hands dirty but the DG's answer on that day was no I can't get involved or we can't talk about that because the rules of play to a carry a uh, a Kerry Junior D football championship, I think, game that he references. He says, if, you know, I can't lift the phone and say, let's get this sorted out. But the Kerry Junior D championship is down to the Kerry County Board to sort out. When it comes to an All Ireland final, to not make a comment, to not make a comment, I, it, to me, it's just, uh, to me and to anybody else I've talked to about this and asked their own opinion without fear or favour. They just all say it was just completely washing their hands of it. I mean, it's just a ridiculous thing to say, oh, no, no, this this row can occur and we won't even allow one of our spokespeople to explain it to to the country. Go on radio. Like, you know, Marty Marcy, off the ball, any people would be absolutely delighted to broadcast a, a GA figure explaining calmly to any host what the situation is. And that would have been enough. But to say nothing and then to turn around when you're asked about it, not address it whatsoever until you're directly asked about it and say and and pull up an example that is not relevant. To me, that's, look, it's just not good enough, like, mm-hmm. you know. But it does go to the point that you make present limited enough, limited enough. But at the same time, you want someone there with the microphone who you know uh, will will be able to give a good account of themselves, will be able to explain it, will be able to talk in the language of the normal person in the GA that understands it rather than just what we have now, which is just, it's, people talk about the disconnect and I always rail against that, you know, about a disconnect between the club GA uh, and, and GA politicians, if you want to call them that, or the, or the top brass, Crook Park. I've never bought that. I don't like that because I happen to know a lot of people who who work for the GA and in the GA, and they are dedicated GA people. And for Charlotte Burns, you, you couldn't meet a more dedicated. And that goes for the full-time staff in Crook Park. It's not fair, but the perception is there that there is a disconnect. That needs healed. That does need healed, and Charlotte Burns is perfect for that. It's a massive positive for him because he appreciates the political uh, circumstances. He 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 can see things coming that with the best will in the world, like you know, I, I just can't see Pat Tehan having the same level of uh, political sophistication when it comes to the north as Jarlis' lived experience shows, yeah. and even like um, Niall, as experienced as he is, like 
he has spent an awful portion, a serious portion of his adult life away working. He would appreciate overseas, Jay, better than Jarrett would. But at the same time, this is a home job now. This is a job now. When they come on Friday night, they have to think about this as Ireland politically is in turmoil. We need someone who appreciates the situation and that has garnered huge respect in the unionist community here uh, that can deliver our message and that openly embraces them, like, you know, is not afraid to say, you know, is not, a, it also recognizes the fact is there are some within that number that will never ever have anything to do with the GA because it's almost like their identity in itself mm. is we are anti this, we are anti that, we are anti GA. But at least we would have someone that knows that, that recognizes that, has spoken to those people. Finally, um, on Larry McCarthy, obviously, who's, who's going to be the, the outgoing president in a year's time. Um, what is his legacy? Because I'm, I'm getting kind of dual notes from you over the course of the last 20 odd minutes, whereby the COVID thing landed in his lap and that's something that had to be dealt with. And there was a lot of, you know, bailing water, as you put it, had to be done. Uh, but there's also areas that could have been done better, is the sense I'm getting. Uh, you look at just a general communication, maybe. I, I don't, I, 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 I haven't sat down to really make a full assessment of that, right? And and, and I've been on the show before and and referred to him as a ribbon cutter, and that that just really kind of unfair of me. That that's not right. That and that that kind of language is really uh, that's it's nasty to be honest with me. But the, at the same time, uh, and I don't know, I don't know. I I, I am only spe- I'm, I can speak here as a club volunteer, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is you know because I'm involved in, in underage hurling in Tyrone, which is fairly unglamorous, but as you might imagine. But uh, there is someone like, and I don't know whose decision this falls down to, whose, whose office this comes across, but someone like Martin, see Martin Fogarty of Kilkenny that was a former coach under Brian Cody. Uh, he had the, the job of hurling, national hurling director for a five-year term. He was keen to continue it, right? And the job that he did in establishing like cross-county uh, leagues, Ulster wide leagues so that like brand new adult teams could spring out out of nowhere and start playing hurling and there was no shame in it because you weren't getting beat by 30 points every week Mm -hmm. because you would find another couple of teams your age and it was graded superbly and we were able to enter a team in adult hurling like you know in an area where there had never been adult hurling in Throne before Martin Fogarty simply put did more for Ulster hurling or Connacht hurling in the last 50 years, there is no, there's no comparison. There's not a single figure that you could say that did and achieved what Martin Fogarty did. His contract ran out. He was keen to continue. He made that known. And it wasn't it wasn't renewed. And, like, you know, you can say that that's a small look at all the things that these people have to deal with. Like, they have to deal with Kisman Park and integration and all that. And all those things are up in the air, swirling around up there somewhere. But nothing's been done on them. This is something, this is a very uh, direct thing, a small, like people might say, small thing. Maybe it is a small thing, but I'll tell you what, the job that he did was mm-hmm. absolutely enormous. Absolutely enormous. And how how was he thanked? His contract was let run out, and he was said, thanks very much, Martin, off you go. Mm. Is that down fully to the president? Probably not. But do you not know, think it's something that he might have noticed or picked up on or had some kind of uh, an idea that this was coming to an end? Or, like, I mean, you know, the GA's own websites carried many, many articles praising the work that Martin Fogarty was doing. And, like, again, you can say, actually, what odds? Like, you know, you can draw a line between Dublin and Galway and say that's the Mason-Dixon line of hurling. But for some people, hurling is their preferred sport, right? Mm. And, like... Uh, especially in us there's just been let rot and uh, as Dennis Walsh once said like nobody up here in those councils and stuff like that successive uh, successful, successive Ulster councils have come and gone and nobody wore it as a stain on their conscience nobody uh, some might have been slightly disappointed but in general like people just let it all wash over them and say actually that's harder they just do complaints like, but then when you got someone with dynamism that was out on the road all the time, uh, you had you had an asset there, and don't tell me that nobody in Croke Park couldn't see that, and they couldn't because it was all splashed all over their website in, in long pieces. Mm. 
Listen, it's going to be an interesting weekend. It all kicks off uh, tomorrow night, obviously, with that vote for the presidency. Uh, Declan Bogue, thanks so much for joining us this evening.